come here on earth. There's no sick people in heaven. There's no broke people in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. So if God said it, he meant it. So I said in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us. Who? We who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty and dwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. So, there's two people that can say something in your life. There's God, and then there's man. I don't just mean man like as in a man like me or one of them. I mean mankind, male or female. So God can say something, and man can say something. But you got to ask yourself, whose report do you believe? Because it's easy to believe what the world says, because that's not faith. To go to the doctor, they say, you got this. Oh, crap. I guess I'm stuck with this. There's no faith in it. For me to go down the road and I see a bunch of people that ain't doing nothing and I just compare myself and say, man, I'm going to be a nobody because look at them. Because I'm believing man's report. I'm believing what I see before my eyes. I'm not believing God's report. God said he has plans to prosper me. God said he wanted to bless me. He wanted to use me. That he wants me to possess the earth. But whose report are you believing? Because there's always going to be a voice telling you one thing. To not get you to live by faith. Oh, Esther, you ain't, you ain't got enough money. You, you, you think you're going to be able to pay the bills? Well, I, I know it got paid last month. But how's that going to happen this month? No, no, no. Look, you don't have anything right now. You might hear those things. Family members. Friends. Esther, you don't got no money. And you're sitting here reading the Bible saying God's going to come through. You need to go out there and start asking for money. So whose report are you going to believe? God's report? God. Or man's report? Because man's going to say, oh, you're an idiot. You need to get a job. You ain't going to make it. You're broke. You won't be nobody. But God's report says differently. God said you're blessed when you come in and you're blessed when you come out. That you're the head and not the tail. That you're above and not beneath. He said give and it shall be given. He said when you seek his kingdom, that all these things will be added unto you. So if you notice, God's report and man's report of faith is totally different. Amen. Two different things. So you got to ask yourself, whose report are you listening to and who told you? If doubt's coming in your ear, Fears coming in your body, depression, worry. God's not telling you that, and God's not giving you that. Because God is a good God. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. It says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Let me stop right there for a second. Now, just think about this. You ain't got no money, and you got to pay rent the next day. Someone in their natural carnal mind will say, look, man, you need to just keep everything you have and save it up. Look, don't give to God. No, man, look, don't tithe. You can't afford that. How are you going to tithe? Then you got to pay bills. No, just keep that money. No, 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 don't, don't give. No, because you might not have enough money. No, man, go out there and get a job. Just... Stop going to church. Just get a full-time job. Go get a career that pays really well. And you can be somebody, and your rent will always be taken care of. That's what a, a wisdom from a man might try to tell you. They said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Telling you, no, 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 don't give. You can't afford that. Just keep that money. Look, this month, don't even tie. This month, don't even give. Because you might not be able to pay your bills. You might not be able to make it. Why tithe? When I could just use all this and get my bills done. With. But he said, but in the power of God. It said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. There is power in God's word to create a change in your life by faith. There is power. Everybody say, there's power in God's, 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 God's Word to change your life, to change your life. or your situation, or your situation. By, faith. By, by faith. So man's going to say one thing, 
There's going to be one report from man, but there's a different report from God. So you got to ask yourself, whose report are you going to believe? What does man say? And what does God say? Now, God backs up his what? See where it's blank right there? Word. Somebody Word. answer for me. Word. Word. What is it? Word. Did it say feelings? No. no. Doubts? No. no. Unbeliefs? No. no. Certain people? No. no. It says what? Word. word. God backs up his word. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten to my word to perform. Everybody say, God, God will perform his word. Will perform, will perform his, his word. word. So you got to ask yourself, what does God say about your situation? It could be healing, it could be finances. It could be anything like family members. But what does God say about it? And how are we going to step out by faith? Because God's waiting to perform his word. He's not waiting to perform man's wisdom and man's report. He's waiting to perform his word. So you got to ask yourself and search, well, okay, well, what does God say about my situation? What does God say about me doubting? What does God say about fear? What does God say about me judging? What does God say about asking? What does God say about receiving? What does God say about my life? What does God say about prosperity? This is stuff you got to ask yourself, and then you got to go and get it yourself and apply it. You got to go and get the word on it, and by faith, step out and apply it to your life. That everything you need will be, be, be created by faith. You're here by faith, you were saved by faith. Everything and anything that you need is only going to come by faith. Not feelings, not doubt, not fear. Faith is not a feeling. The only way you're going to get it is by faith. you got to get a word on it so God can perform his word. He says he hastens over his word to perform it, that God is watching over his word to perform his word. Just like this. Okay, let me give you an example. Say I'm a football coach, right? And let's say I want to pick a football play. Well, that football play is the word, right? Let's say that football play is the word. And I pick that. Somebody on my team says, okay, I'm going to pick this one right here. I'll pick this word. And I'm the coach. Now, what am I doing? I'm watching over my players to perform what they just said. I'm watching over what they're about to do. To perform over what they said. To say, okay, I want to pick this play. I want to do that. That's the word on it. We're going to run this play, coach. Okay, go ahead and run it. And I'm watching over it to perform what I taught them. I'm watching over it to perform what I said to them. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with God. you got to go and get a word on it. you got to step out on faith. Is it healing? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it pain? Is it finances? Whatever it is. Anything you need is in the Bible. So, you got to ask yourself, again, whose report do you leave? Man's or God's? You got to know that it's impossible for God to lie, that what he says, he means, and that God's word is true. So everybody say, God's word is true. God's word is true. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. I have to believe God's report. I have to believe God's report. God's watching over his word to perform it. God's watching over his word to perform it. I have to listen to God. I have to listen to God. And I have to get a word on it. And I have to get a word on it. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for God. Amen. Let me read a scripture to you. Jeremiah 32, verse 26 through 27. And I put my name in verse 26 because it was for me. And it could be for you if you wanted to. Then came the word of the Lord unto Rabbi, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And it left a question mark. 
Is there anything too hard for God? No. It said, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. no. Is there anything too hard for God? No. It said it's impossible for God to lie. It says that his word is truth. Yeah. But whose report do we believe? God. God's or men? God. God's word. Now, in order for us to believe God's word, to know that his word is true, to step out on his word in faith, we have to answer this question right here. It says God wants us to blank. A, give up. B, show up. C, mess up. Or D, grow up. Somebody raise their hand and tell me which one it is. Grow up. Grow up. Anyone else? Show up. No. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. You try. God wants us to grow up. How are we going to grow? By the word of God. Amen. By stepping out on faith. Not a natural growth, but a spiritual growth. The only way for us to grow is by the word of God. God doesn't want you to mess up or give up or just show up. You know, he knows you're going to mess up. That's okay. But he wants us to grow up. Now, in order for us to grow up, we have to get tired of ourselves. What do I mean? You got to get tired of the position that you're in. And say, I'm tired of being here. I'm not going to doubt anymore. I don't care what I feel like. I'm not going to give up anymore. I'm not going to be moved by what I feel anymore. I'm going to grow up, God. 